Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Hope everybody's doing well, having a good time. Um, you know, it is March, which officially means it's Women's History Month. Um, actually, it is Women's History Day today, Women's Inter International Women's Day today. Um, so we're dedicating this month to uh, a series of Community Voices episodes just for her, speaking for her, lifting her up, um, and just speaking to the community and the support, um, and just, you know, the, the progression of women equality and, you know, making sure that we just continue to give them a voice and support them however we can. So um, also heritage, her talking to her this time was really about the heritage as well, making sure that we speak to, you know, the past that kind of defines who she is, what she's doing in the present to make the change and the things that are going to be done in the present that will affect the future of where she will be that way. So we're also just looking at the whole timeline on how we support um, acknowledging those things. So Definitely really important conversations for the future, for the past, and to acknowledge the present. And I'm just very excited to kick this series off with the amazing singer and songwriter, Twee. How are you doing today? Thanks for joining us for International Women's Day. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. I didn't know that today was actually Women's Day, so I'm very, very honored. And also, we need more than just a month to celebrate women because without us, this wouldn't be happening. So like, I think we need a whole just year, you know, just to celebrate women, but I'm really honored. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. I, I definitely agree. I definitely know <laughs> we have the month. I know we got calendar wise and culture wise. We have the time that they give us, but it's year round practice. So it's gotta be a year. Yes. I definitely agree. <laughs> Don't be nice to us just on women's history month. <laughs> Absolutely. A word right there. Absolutely. <laughs> So I want to go ahead and get these kicked off. Um, you know, there's so many, I think there's so many special things about your story, um, especially that I've learned. I mean, that speaks to you individually in a way that, you know, just makes your story unique and makes your approach unique and just kind of has that individualism and in everything that you do and create. I mean, looking into your name, not just the pronunciation of it, but the the name of what it means. I think the name meaning water, if I'm, if I'm correct, means, means water, right? Don't, I don't want to be wrong. Okay. Yes. To me, and that's really powerful because water is super powerful. That is super. Is that? Do you, do you see that? Did you see that? Yeah. What? That's crazy. The AI. I've, I've that's never insane. seen it. I don't know why it's happening, but I would. But take it's fitting. It. It's fitting. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um. Now I'm throwing off. All right. So yes, meaning water. Um, also, I thought it was interesting how you went from the medical field to being in the entertainment industry to being a singer and songwriter. Um, you know, also representing Asian Americans. Um, just everything that is just so unique and specific to your story that makes you who you are. I would love to kind of know how do you feel those things really just shape your approach to the craft of music and that artistry. Well, I feel like the the name Twee and it meaning water is just so fitting because water just flows so freely. And I feel like that's kind of the way that I approach everything in my life. Like I just go with the flow. And anytime that I find myself fighting the current, I kind of like take a step back and just try to be present in the moment and not think too much about getting somewhere or being successful or doing all these things. And I feel like the reason why I've gotten to where I've been is because I've just kind of like allowed myself to like lay in the water and just go with the flow um and my my saying that I always say to my team and to everybody is it is what it is and when things don't happen the way it's supposed to I'm kind of like whatever it's fine um and I definitely don't get hung up on things too easily but I do feel like that type of perspective has helped me a lot just in making music um it's gotten harder as I've kind of gotten further in my career um, just because, you know, I think naturally once you get somewhere or you have like a viral song or anything like that, anything you work on after that feels like, wait, are people going to like this? So I just kind of have to remind myself that I have to just go with the flow. And anytime I like restrict that and that's when I'm not being fully myself. So yeah, I just feel like in this industry, I've just kind of like allowed myself to just be mm. and just create and and I think that that's gotten me this far. So I'm like, just remember that. Absolutely, I think that's key. I think that that how quick it is to forget to just be where everything started, where everything stems from, and you know when all the the hit records or the trending songs or you know all the accolades come around. At the end of the day, you do have to get back to the center of just like where did that all come from? It came from me just being who I am and going from there. Exactly. That's where fireworks, exactly. about, you know, but it's okay. 
Now, I actually want to take it back when we're talking about um, heritage and speaking to like the past as well. And as you were, when you were a kid, you were singing. Like you've always been singing. You've always been into like music and things like that. I would like to know, you know, when, when you're at that stage, sometimes it's like a hobby. It's fun. You enjoy it. But there is a certain clicking point or a certain turning point sometimes in life where it's like, no, I actually want to do this. I actually want to be this. Like, what was that point for you when you realized that, yo, I want to actually like go for this as a career. I want to actually make this part of my life. Honestly, I think that that was when I was seven or eight. And that was kind of around the time that Britney Spears was like blowing up. And I remember looking at her and watching her perform. Like I would just go, like I, I was a fanatic and I was just always, any type of press that she had, I had it and I was consuming it. And I just remember as a little girl, knowing that I was gonna do that, but it was something that I knew in silence because I didn't want to tell my parents because also growing up my entire life, it was always, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be all these things, right? And I get it. My parents are both immigrants from Vietnam. So that's also all that they knew. And because of that was all that I knew and all my cousins were either doctors or lawyers or, or they were doing like some really incredible jobs, I felt so much pressure to just do that and hide what I really wanted to do. But I've always known as a little girl, I was like, I'm gonna make this happen. And also just like a little bit of delusion. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't doing anything. It wasn't like I was singing all the time or anything like that, but I just knew that that was where I could see myself. I like that, I like that. And I like <laughs> that you spoke to the to the, the, the piece of kind of, um, when you're doing something different from the norm that is usually around you and how, you know, the, the, the pressure that that involves that, but also just staying true to yourself, you know, saying like the art of just being, you know, like I, I do want to maybe do these things, but my heart is also being pulled here. Let's see where my heart leads. If I just, you know, send the love in both areas. So I, I think, I, I think that's really important that you sp spoke to that too. You're, you're like speaking to my soul right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and right it's also the inspiring. Like, I mean, I guess I think a lot of people, can relate to that, especially earlier on, because there's just so much pressure around us. So just like, you know, and especially in today's day and age, we're allowed it, we're allotted the opportunity to literally do what we want and Anything. pass. You know, our parents didn't have that opportunity. They, you know, they 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 came from different backgrounds. The internet wasn't even what it was today, social wasn't what it was today. So you just have all this opportunity that we can now take advantage of. So it's so true. It's so true. I love it. Um and also I want to speak to you about um like your upbringing, your parents and stuff as well. But I think last year I thought it was so special. Um, I, I'm pretty sure it was last year, so if I'm incorrect, please feel free to correct me. Um, <laughs> you got the opportunity to return home uh, to, to Vietnam as a star, a star singer. And from what I saw in that blog, you, the lights were, the room was lit up from phone to phone, from you on stage. Um, I think that's just like, you know, so inspirational to go back home, to go back to, in that way and, and do things that you've always dreamed of and like really like kind of like paying homage to also where you came from, and like, like, you know, the roots of things. I would love for you to kind of take us through the emotions that you felt, whether it's on stage or just like landing and knowing that that moment was happening. And then the importance of just remembering like where you came from and also just kind of being able to acknowledge those things, speak to those things and, you know, just kind of not keeping it necessarily at the forefront all the time, but keeping it in your heart when you approach things. No, I, and I love that because I think that being an artist is just, you're a dope artist and that's what it is. But, you know, inside, like that is what is important to me and what I'm proud of. So I was already proud to be Vietnamese American, like, but when I flew to Vietnam to do the show, I just remember being immersed in the culture and just feeling like, wow, these are my people. Like these are the nicest people ever and the most welcoming people. And I just felt so incredibly at home, even mm -hmm. though I haven't been there for years, like almost a decade, you know? And so just to be back and to be back with my team and then to be back doing what I do, it was like a full circle moment. And then a side story was my dad, my dad had heard that I was gonna be doing a Vietnam show and typical dad, he doesn't tell me that he's flying to Vietnam and he also doesn't tell me that um, he's bringing family members to the show. So I'm like, I get there 
and I'm at the show and all of a sudden my uncles and who I haven't seen since I was 15 show up to greet me and just to like for them to even be in the building I, I remember I was at um billboard vietnam at the time mm -hmm. and they saw the fans outside you know screaming and just hugging me and, and all this and I, and I think for them they didn't fully wrap their heads around what that moment was for them mm -hmm. um but I just remember the look on their eyes like they were just like oh my gosh like this little girl that I've known who didn't ever tell me that she sings is th doing this like this was crazy and I could tell my dad was very proud because he was able to show them that, you know, that my daughter who I immigrated to America, you know, for a better life is now doing something that she loves. And I could tell that my dad was very proud of that. And then that same night we had a performance and I remember the feeling of like, are people gonna know the lyrics? Like are people, I don't know. Cause I haven't ever performed in Vietnam before. So I, I didn't know. I, did, I honestly had the lowest expectations. And I think that that's, you know, have high dreams, but have low expectations for things because <laughs> if things don't go out a certain way, I, I just don't want to like be hard on myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember stepping on the stage and I was like, wow, they are singing word for word. And I, it was just the most amazing night and just seeing my dad and my uncles just be so proud of me and it just be a full circle moment was, was really cool for me. Uh, so the feel honestly I had a lot of emotions a lot of emotions I was happy excited very sweaty and hot and it was it was really fun I love that that's definitely one of those moments you probably just never forget like no matter what never happens, you just never forget it never and Vietnam continues to be the the best country that I've ever traveled to I I love Vietnam so much and I can't wait to go back that's fire. That's gonna, I can't. When you go back, I'm gonna need another vlog about. It. I'm gonna oh yeah, the whole thing. I it's love gonna it. be a whole food vlog because the food in Vietnam is incredible. All the street food. I want to try everything. I don't. I, I'm. I, I'm gonna be fully like ready to go. And we need more than. I think we're only there for like two days, mm -hmm. and I need. I need at least a week next time. And my team, they're even like Vietnam was the best place that I've ever been to and so to bring like my DJ who's Mexican Chinese like mixed and and then to bring like my Filipino friend and then to bring my you know white friend there and then they're all just immersed in the culture I'm like this is so cool that music was able to bring us here and bring us all together and just like this is so crazy that this is our life that's powerful that's really yeah powerful. I love that I want to make sure I go home and subscribe to the channel so I can be ready when it comes please. out please please <laughs> I also want to take this moment, you know, as community voices, we're also, you know, making sure that we uh, impact the community and making sure that we're giving back, uplifting voices and just making a change and making a difference in these communities. Um, and we'll be donating on behalf of the charity to Downtown Women's Center. Um, Downtown Women's Center, for those who don't know, um, it's, an only, it's an organization in Los Angeles focused exclusively on serving and empowering women and, and gender diverse individuals experiencing homelessness. Something I think that is extremely important. Um, I would love to know. And also something I think is extremely important. I also just think about the extreme, the importance of giving back with your platform, no matter who you are, no matter your level, no matter what you do, just also always giving back to the people around you. I think it's extremely important. Um, I would love to know, you know, I don't give back to your community is important to you. I know we also just talked about community as well uh, a couple of seconds ago too. How do you, um, in this partnership with this organization, kind of like how do you feel these things kind of help continue to create change and empower women? And what is like some of the hope that you're looking to see or kind of um, hoping to see as you continue to do these things for the community? There's two parts to that. But the first part is that one, I'm so blessed to be able to be in a position where I can use my platform, you know, to donate to this incredible organization, but also you know, there's a lot of women out there that are just faced with really rough situations. And this organization being the only one in Los Angeles that helps to empower and serve, you know, women who experience homelessness, I think that is something really important to know. And also a lot of these women who end up homeless, you know, suffer a lot of physical and sexual abuse. And I think that it's just even bigger than like these women not being able to find a job or anything like that. I think this organization that focuses on helping women just, you know, helping their mental health, helping their physical health and having all of these resources for them 
to hopefully lead them in a, you know, lead them in a better direction. And um, I just, I'm just honored to even be doing like a small part, you know? So on, on the other end of things, I just hope that, you know, the epitome of like women supporting women is so important, right? Mm -hmm. And to be a woman myself and to be able to just lend a hand in that way, I I feel like it's my purpose. And I feel like even through music, right? I'm I'm helping women to feel more empowered because for a really long time too, I never felt empowered in my own body. Um, and I'm sure these women experience things on a more heightened level. So I think just to be able to do a small part, I'm like, I feel very happy about and I'm more than happy to do. So I'm just grateful to you guys for allowing me that, that platform and giving me that option and that opportunity to do that. So thank you to you guys, of course. So, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I, I love that you spoke to women supporting women, right? I think we see it, we believe it, but I think sometimes, you know, it could be done more. Now, not even just yes. from, the, from the, the men's side, men supporting women, women supporting women. I mean, especially in the industry where, you know, we're all about the drama and the teas that are going on and not necessarily progressive or positive for like the support. You know what I mean? So I, I love that you speak to women supporting women, whether it's in the music industry, entertainment industry, whether it's just in life as your coworker, yes. just that totally. theme of doing that everywhere and outside of March. Mm -hmm. Make sure you do that every day, all year round, 365, not just the 30 or 31 days that are in March. So now I want to ask you one more thing before we get ready to wrap it up, because I appreciate your time. But also, I know you're really busy as well. Um, as a woman who I believe I feel has embraced her full self, I mean, even just speaking with you, I can just tell that you're being you from when you entered the call to even now that you're just always yourself. Um, and it's also it's really inspiring to see that. Um, you've done that in every aspect of your career. The future is really bright. Like, I'm sure you've seen that. I've seen it. I'm sure your team has seen it. What has been the biggest takeaway that you've gained from your experience in this industry that you would pass on to someone who kind of aspires to be an artist like you or is aspiring to be an artist in general? God, don't be afraid. Mm. I think for a really long time, I was afraid of even voicing out loud that this was what I wanted to do because I never felt good enough. I never felt that I was trained enough, that I was, you know, but as people, we always feel like we're not enough, mm -hmm. but that isn't, that isn't enough of a reason to not at least start, you know? And I think kind of like lean into that fear. And a lot of my career, I've done things that have scared me so much, but I just knew, and it wasn't something that someone told me. It wasn't like my team was like, just do this. It's going to get you, you know, but it was an inner thing that I had to work on because I never told people that I, that I was afraid because I didn't want to, I didn't want to manifest that energy. So I was like, inside I was dying. But on the outside, I was like, yes, I will do that, you know? And I felt like all these things that I've done that have scared me so much have allowed me to grow so much. And it's not an overnight thing. And so what I would say is just lean into it. Don't be afraid to look dumb. Don't be afraid to to do what you love because you're afraid people are going to judge you or whatever that is. Because in hindsight, I look back at my old stuff. I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But it's gotten me to where I'm at. So I think it's all a journey. And if that's part of your journey, I think just lean into it. And just don't be afraid. There's no point in being afraid. I want to ask one question in relation to, what, to your response. I think this is really important for people to hear. I know you said also, like, sometimes the fear isn't big enough for you to just start, which I think is extremely key. I think that's like something that people need to be writing in their journals right now. But I would love, would you mind speaking to how you recognize that you were actually like operating in fear. Like though you never voiced it, when were you like, yo, like, am I like, is this like a, a really not wanting to do this? Or like, am I scared? Like, am I how do I have oh, yeah. like how did you I have I have those thoughts all the time. I mean, even going into Coachella, right? And doing like having dancers and and learning dance, that's really scary for me because I've never grown up to be trained to dance or anything like that. I mean, I'm not like, I don't have two left feet, but at the same time, I'm not like the five, six, seven, eight stuff. Just, it scares me. Right. And I could just go up on the stage and do, you know, and, and sing on the mic and that's great. But for me as an artist, I want to be able to at least try that, even though that scares me. So I've been having those conversations with myself recently, actually. And I think that's the funny thing about fear is that things just get bigger. So 
you just know that anytime that you're scared about something, just know that you're growing. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think I just like tell myself that like, like I envision myself already doing it so that mm -hmm. I don't have to be afraid of the journey. Um, then I kind of more like have fun during the journey and I know that I'm going to kill it and may, and again, it's like that delusion. Right. But again, mm -hmm. you just have to like lean into it and, you know, even growing up, I used to wrestle and I used to, you know, wrestling is really scary. Like you go have these one-on-one -on -one matches with people and it's, it's, it's a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, I remember going home after practice and sitting on my bed and closing my eyes and visualizing the match from start to finish. So I think that, that I'm like kind of taking those things into my music career. And I think sometimes I even surprise myself at what I'm able to accomplish just with my mind. So your mind is very powerful and just like, just just don't be afraid like you know just know that being afraid is okay it's a good thing mm -hmm. it's a good thing because then you're not comfortable you're gonna grow from this so yeah. I love that oh I love that I love that <laughs> you have like these emotions but at the end of the day too it's up to you how you utilize that emotion like a bad day mm -hmm. to end a bad day it can be whatever you want it to be as you continue going throughout the day so I love that and I love exactly. that you spoke to you saw it happening first before the fear came. So if you mm -hmm. see it happening, you've already kind of envisioned everything without the fear. So the fear comes mm -hmm. later. So clearly the fear isn't necessarily necessary. Or if it is, mm -hmm. use it to push you in the right way that you've Yes, because so. I think that fear is also your body being like, maybe or maybe your insecurities telling you that you can't do it or that like, you know, but you got to break through that and, and, and tap into the other part of yourself that's like, no, I actually can do this, you know? Um, so it's all, it's all a good thing. I think it's, it's all part of growth as a human growth, as an artist growth, as anything you're doing in life. I'm sure people have fear all the time, you know, when they're about to get to that next level of their life. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just lean into it. it. <laughs> Best growth comes from discomfort. I know that personally. So I think totally, you know, totally. So I appreciate you. Thank you so, so, so much for joining us on this episode and just sharing your story and sharing your experience and everything. I appreciate you a hundred percent. Thank you, Devin. Of course. You're awesome. Thank you to everybody as well. Also who joined in tuning in to watch community voices and until next time, take care.